who with his professionalism and patience has kept the machine rolling and me on the right track. Thank you, John. Thank you. And I'll pass you over to Terry, who's got far more interesting speech. <laughs>
group that we sort of work in partnership with, which is a very new group. It's called the Heritage Trail Project. And the Heritage Trail Project is, was, I think, I believe, formed by five partners, the Historical Society, Court Lead, Bloomers, Quick Lake Business Association, and also Quick Lake Town Council. And the reason for forming it was the feedback that the Quick Lake Business Association had received from the Tourist Agency, Busy Yorkshire, and also from the judges' feedback for putting in bloom, in that we have a lovely town, but we don't actually make the best of it. And the reason why we don't make the best of it is because we all know it's lovely, and we probably don't get around to it. But the great thing about the Heritage Trail is that they're actually starting now to, to do 80 interpretation boards. And the interpretation boards will be dotted on a trail all through Cricklade. And the good news is they've got funding for nine out of the planned 18 interpretation boards. So you're going to find the face of Cricklade changing very shortly. Uh, Cricklade Town Council, we actually help out with administrative support, banking, and also um, officer support as well. And I've got an example here of one of the slides, one of the interpretation boards, which is the, the old railway station that we used to run along the Malmesbury Road. And as you can see, it's a very, very detailed slide, it's taken a lot of work to put together, and very, very educational. And I think as well as educating the residents who live in Cricklade, it'll also do much um, for the main reason to actually try and encourage visitors to visit and to learn a bit more about Cricklade. I understand that the railway station board will actually be in situ sometime this summer by the railway sign, it's a signpost on the Marsby Road roundabout so keep an eye out for it and any others that might um, come along so well done, it's an exciting initiative and I can't wait to see more of the boards ok, the next thing that um, we've been, been working on is the, the skate park now as well as working in partnership with various groups, we also actually uh, respond quite a bit to, to feedback and to, to queries from local residents. And a bit of the feedback we've received is actually from young people about the skate park. Um, the skate park was becoming dangerous. They were using the skate park, people were using it as a cut through to walk through from the, the ledger centre to the playing field, they were leaving dirt on the floor. Um, young children from nearby um, actives were coming in and sort of um, getting in a way, and so collisions and accidents were more likely to happen. So they came to the Town Council and, and we set about trying to find funding. And we managed to find £6,000 via the Area Board, Town Council, Red Lion Charity, and the Cricket Business Association. And also we had a £50 contribution from the skateboarders themselves. So I'd like to thank Shirley and Tina for actually uh, working very hard on this and also for all the people who contributed because as you can see, and which is a, a thread running through uh, this presentation, we have very, very committed groups in Cricket Aid who are absolutely <coughs> constantly put into their, their hand in their pocket for, for various community groups, so thank you very much. Um, and also what's really nice is that they want to extend this great park and I know that we'll be working very closely with them going forward um, to actually enhance the facility. Okay, dog business. <laughs> There's a lot of it around, unfortunately. Um, Cricklade is a great place for dogs. Got loads of fields, loads of places to, to take your doggies walking. Um, and also, by and large, we're all responsible dog owners. But unfortunately, we have got a small minority who uh, persist in leaving their dog mess, whether it's through ignorance or whether it's through laziness. Um, and so we've actually embarked on um, last year campaigns to actually try and educate people to understand that you need to pick up after your dog. You're not in the countryside if you're in a green field. A lot of um, green space, if it's public, open to the public, you must pick up after your dog. Um, and one of these, what we did last year, we had a query actually at this meeting last year where a resident raised it as a query. And also we had uh, St Sampson's and the various schools and Thames Preschool also identifying that there was a problem, particularly on Gas Lane. Gas Lane obviously is a way to school. It's, um, it's, it's quite a danger for children who have a dog mess around. So we've actually embarked on a campaign to try and educate and get people to clear up after them. We've also been working very, very closely with the dog warden, and the dog warden has also been doing monthly advice surgeries, again to try and educate dog owners about looking after their dog. So hopefully, fingers crossed, especially as we're a champion in the championship, um, we're actually going to, to improve and we find that's an improvement in our local community. <coughs> Christmas lights. Now the Christmas lights, um, Town Council, we actually set up a working party um, last year um, to actually look at our Christmas lights and the annual event. 
Now, the reason why we set up the working party was because our lights were literally on their last legs and we didn't know how long they were going to last. So we had to do something about that. Also, we had the Cricket Labour Association um, wanted to stand down. They've been running it very, very success successfully, the annual event, for a few years, and they needed a bit of a break. And, um, and so we thought we'd take the opportunity to do a, a comprehensive review. And one of the first things we did, we actually, we actually invited the, the CBA, the Cricket Labour Business Association, to actually be part of the working party. Had lots of experience, um, obviously they've done the annual event for years, and they had a lot um, to give us in terms of their knowledge and experience. Um, the first thing we did though, we actually went out to about 15 other councils and the idea was really was to, to try and find out what do they do, what's their best practice, have they got any ideas, what is their spend. And, and one of the first things that we found was, was that we actually, our spend did compare favourably with other councils for a similar type town, sized town. Um, the other thing that we found was that, um, that many, many community groups helped town councils to deliver Christmas. It wasn't just a town council or just a town community group. Um, and the other thing we found is that our installation costs were very, very expensive. Uh, and part of the reason for that is that our old fashioned lampposts had our old fashioned electric wiring in there as well, unfortunately. And we had to employ highly qualified electrical contractors to actually wire in the lights every year. And that was actually costing practically all of our budget. And on top of that, it was going up 10 to 15% year on year. And we thought the only way we'd cut these costs is to find a way for our own grounds team, our own in-house grounds team, to actually uh, take on the responsibility of erecting the lights. So uh, we've got various quotes, got various costings, and the ultimate happened. Our grounds team found a um, space in their diary to erect the lights, and thank you to them. Um, but also, we, we actually changed the sockets over to plug in time so a layperson can actually plug them in rather than having to pay somebody to actually do it for us. And, and because we, we did that, the grounds we could do it, and also we bought this mobile scaffold to allow people, to allow the grounds team to actually erect them. We didn't have to hire a cherry pick of three, five hundred pounds um, just to do that. We actually spent that money on a, a, a mobile scaffold. And the good thing about the mobile scaffold is it can be used all year round by the grounds team. It can do all their safety checks on their play areas. And the other, hopefully, the good thing about it is that other community groups might wish to use it and they can save costs on their projects as well. So um, it was a big, big win all, all around. But more than that, we actually met all these costs from our existing budgets. We didn't actually take anything out of general reserves or nothing. We met it from our existing budgets. And year on year, we've saved £1,500 every year because our grounds team now erect the lines. With the help from Bob this year, so I'd like to thank the grounds team and Bob for their support in that. And I also like to say as well, because we changed the lights over, we could also have these lovely new lights, these lovely fancy lights that um, you could have. Unfortunately, we've run out of money. So enter Bob Jones and uh, the Quick Lane Business Association, and who launched the appeal. And as you could probably all aware of, um, in a very short space of time, um, Bob raised seven thousand pounds. Um, towards new lights, so we've got these LED lights, so obviously they're sort of environmentally friendly as well. Um, and we had a lot of contributions from the residents. Um, one particular um, donor who was very, very generous, Red Line Fund, Sportsman's Fund, Quick Labour Association. And I'd just like to say a big, big thank you to them all because uh, I think you probably did notice the difference at Christmas and uh, that we actually moved to town. Next year, there's going to be a few more lights. Um, and also, next year, hopefully, we'll have an annual event. The CBA have definitely stood down now. Bob promises he's not going to do it again. <laughs> and we need a community group to be formed to actually take over that responsibility. So we're looking for enthusiastic volunteers to come forward and set up a new community group. I promise it'll be fun. It won't be painful, hopefully. Um, but I think you'll find that you've got a very, very solid foundation on which to build. We've got new lights, we've got new wiring, we just need to, to have the enthusiasm to actually get, get a new um, sort of annual event together. So um, I think that's all for me.